This is the PA Startup Podcast, episode number eight. This is the PA Startup Podcast, where we help pre-PA students, current PA students, and new grads start their careers as physician assistants. I'm your host, Chris Darst. We are glad you're here. Howdy, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the PA Startup Podcast. If you are a returning listener, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your time. I appreciate uh, you choosing this podcast to listen to. And most of all, I hope that you find it helpful. If you are in this... Uh, hmm. If you are a new listener, welcome to the podcast. Um, these episodes are in no particular order, so you can jump around and, and pick what applies to you at the time. Um, so, But thank you so much for finding us. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you get uh, some good nuggets of information out of here today. Um, a quick aside, uh, I'm trying something new this episode. If you go to the show notes, which if you're in iTunes, just click on the cover art and the... Um, the show notes will come up. Otherwise, you can go to the uh, podcast webpage at pastartup.co slash episode eight. And I've put the timestamps for the pertinent areas within this podcast, um, like the subject headings, basically, um, in the show notes so that you can find things quickly. So if you are listening to this in the car or something like that and you want to come back and maybe listen to a section of it, rather than skipping around, um, go to the show notes, find the section that you're looking for, and you can go straight to it, and hopefully it saves you some time. So we'll try that out. Let me know if you like that. Uh, you can always email me, chris at pastartup.co. All right, let's jump into it today, guys. We are talking about, uh, a, a, I would argue, a timely topic today because it's it's April at the time that this is recorded. There's a lot of people who are about to go on uh, summer break for you pre-PA students who might be finishing your uh, bachelor's degree or maybe you're you know going into your final year of, of your bachelor's. Um, you're looking for things to do in the summertime, and uh, one of the main things that happens at that time of your training is shadow. And shadowing is not only for pre-PA students. There's also definite benefit to current PA students spending some free time shadowing, and we'll get into that. But that's what this episode is about today, and we're not talking any shadowing. We're not talking uh, just showing up and being a passive uh, observer. We're talking about shadowing like a boss. How do you get that done? How do you get in there, make a good impression, and leave with uh, more information than you came with and hopefully leaving behind a good impression that you can call on later uh, to your benefit. So that's what we are talking about today. Um, it's just me on the podcast, so I'm sorry you got to listen to this boring old voice drone on. But uh, hang in there. I think you'll find some good information. All right, let's start with the benefits of shadowing. Like I mentioned, this isn't only for pre-PA students. Uh, current PA students can really benefit from this. Um you current PA students, uh, you know what it's like. You know, you get your nose in the books. Um, you're you're trying to get presentations done. You're trying to get uh, tests taken. You're trying to get all kinds of stuff done. It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay um, focused on what your goal is. And so shadowing breaks you out of the classroom, breaks you out of the books, and, and puts you into the workplace, which reminds you why you're doing this in the first place. Because... Honestly, guys, the, the time that you're in PA school is very short, and the time that you're out practicing is very long. So you need to make sure that you enjoy it, number one. And number two, you need to maybe narrow down your focus on where you want to be. So finding some opportunities, a, a day off of school, um, you know, Christmas break or, or holiday break, whatever, winter break, whatever they call it now, um, those are all opportunities that you could call up somebody and say, hey, listen, can I shadow you for four or eight hours or something like that? And uh, just remember why you're doing it. Get excited for it. Get back into the, uh, you know, get out of the books and get back into the real world uh, to remember why you're even going through all this. So that's great motivation for you current PA students. Um, for people that are considering PA school or pre-PA, it is an excellent, excellent opportunity to see how a PA interacts, um, you know, observe the interactions of the PA with the patients, um, with the nursing staff, with the other doctors, um, you know, their responsibilities throughout the day. How much uh, office time do they have? How much clinic time do they have? How much um, hospital time do they have? How much surgical time do they have? You know, all those things. And they're going to differ. So the more people you can shadow, the better, the more well-rounded. And these are opportunities that you will experience that 
will really, really pay off in your interview, in your um, essay, in your, um, you know, your personal statement for PA school, um, and uh, just any conversation with people say, why do you want to be a PA? And you can say, well, you know, I shadowed this PA, you know, two weeks ago, and this is exactly what happened, and this is how I know that I'm in the right space. So um, it's a great firsthand experience of what the day is like for the PA. Um, so uh, the other thing is it's interesting. You don't need to have a focus. You don't, there's, there's not necessarily uh, any reason to pick what you want to do before you even apply to school. But it is kind of nice to keep you focused in the classroom if you know, do I like surgery or do I like clinic? Um, you know, and, and even maybe it would help you find preceptors um, as you navigate through uh, the classroom section, you go out to your clinical rotations. If you've shadowed a number of people, you might not, you might know, hey, I want my elective to be with this guy over in allergy and immunology, man. He was awesome and I really enjoyed him. Or, um, you know, this infectious disease PA, she was awesome and I really want to hang out with her. So it can really help you kind of tie up those uh, connections um, to potentially lead to uh, a rotation with them. And then honestly, maybe even a job in the future. So uh, my current job is, uh, in a roundabout way, a result of shadowing. So I was working as a phlebotomist. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I knew about the PA profession, um, but I was looking at pretty much everything in the hospital. I knew I liked healthcare. Um, so as I was going through, I had been talking about wanting to shadow a PA. And one of the night shift people who was leaving said, oh, my husband's a PA. You should shadow him. And I said, well, what does he do? And she said, well, he's a heart surgery PA. I said, well, I didn't even know heart surgeons had PAs. I thought, you know, PAs were just in the clinic. And she said, no, he's in the operating room. He helps with the heart surgeries. And I said, oh, that'd be incredible. So I shadowed him, went great, shadowed him a couple times, applied to PA school, shadowed him a couple times in school, arranged a uh, elective rotation with him. And then uh, once I was done, I was working general surgery in the same hospital. We're coming down the hallway towards each other. And he said, hey, man, how's your job going? And I said, oh, it's fine. He goes, how would you like to come work with us? You know, uh, we got, we got uh, you know, better pay, better benefits, and probably fewer hours. And I said, well, yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's what led to my interview and now my job. And he said, you know what, man? I remember you from school. I remember you from all those times you shadowed. And uh, you're the first person that came to mind. So had I not done that, had I not been quite so forward about it, um, you know, it might not have led to my job today. So uh, that's, you know, definitely... Uh, the best of uh, of the scenario, but but really, you can get a lot from shadowing multiple different people, and even if it doesn't lead to a job, you can get a lot of good information from it. Uh, for you pre PA students, another benefit of shadowing is if you shadow somebody a handful of times, not once, but maybe twice or more. If you have a good rapport with them, they are a great. Uh, source for a recommendation letter for PA school, especially if they're a PA. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing to have a doctor do it or your manager at your job or something like that. But having a PA that you've shadowed, that you've spent, you know, 16 hours with um, or 24 hours with or whatever, it's however many sessions you've been able to get in, um, you know, it is a great, great source for a recommendation letter. So that's a, a long term benefit of, of shadowing. So there's some good benefits. There's a ton more. Um, so, you know, definitely hit me up uh, over email if you've got more benefits that you think need to be added to this and I can come back and update it. Um, that would be awesome. So uh, here's the thing, though, is shadowing is kind of hard to set up. And why is that? Um, I think it's two reasons. One, uh, the HIPAA laws, which uh, HIPAA stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. And that's basically making... Uh, health information private. So a uh, patient's name, condition, address, you know, anything that's identifiable that can link a patient to, um, you know, their information is protected and is private. And so now there's a bunch more rules about shadowing. You can't just show up, you know, and, and pop into the operating room or, or make rounds with your you know, neighbor who's a doctor on the weekends uh, without going through training and stuff first. So there's a couple more hurdles, but really it's just red tape. You just have to go through the process. Um, actually, I think the the bigger reason that shadowing is hard to set up is that it, it really just distracts the provider and their workflow. So if I take you on as a shadow student, um, I love to teach, I love to interact, I love to get people excited about the profession, but it really does change the workflow because I feel like I want you to have a good experience, I want to explain things to you, but because you haven't been to 
a medical training program of some kind yet, which of course not. That's why you're shadowing. But I feel like, okay, I need to explain um, why I'm giving Lasix. Well, I, I got to explain what Lasix is, and then I have to explain how you know, fluid balance works. And, and so I end up kind of slowing myself down. And it's it's all well intended for sure. And it's totally not your fault. It's it's me wanting to teach, but um, it is a bit distracting and it slows things down just a little bit. Um, and you know what? It should be that way because a shadow experience um, that doesn't, you know, involve any sort of explanation, uh, it's not going to be great. But if you have a shadowing experience where there's a lot of explanation and interaction and stuff like that, that's awesome. Now, that leads me to what shadowing isn't for. Um, shadowing, it shouldn't technically, your, your primary focus for your shadowing is not to expand your medical knowledge. Okay, so if you don't understand histoplasmosis or you don't understand even, you know, diabetes or something like that, shadowing is not the time to get a full lesson on any of those conditions and things. You can certainly get some explanations and things, but your shadowing is not so you learn the material. Your shadowing is to observe how the flow of the day goes and what the role of the the provider is and you know what I talked about at the beginning which was um, observing interactions of the PA with the patients and the nursing staff and the doctors and things like that that's what the the focus is so don't go into it expecting to learn more about medicine or diseases or antibiotics or medications also, shadowing is not to share what you know about a variety of topics. That shouldn't be your primary goal either. Now, if you are asked, of course, by all means, answer questions. But um, don't feel as though you need to volunteer what you know about topics. Or, you know, you see someone with a knee replacement. Oh, my grandma had a knee replacement. She had this complication, this complication. This is what had to be done. And she was at this hospital. Save that, okay? I mean, it's all good information. Don't get me wrong. But it's not an opportunity for you to show off. Um, if you do know a lot about um, topics, it will come through in the questions that they ask you and the way that you answer. Um, but but try not to volunteer information because really you need to be focused more on not sharing your information but, but obtaining information, collecting information from the shadow experience. Um, We'll talk about kind of ways to prepare for shadowing and then things to do while you're shadowing uh, here in just a second. But let's talk about four ways to find shadowing opportunities. Um, this, by all means, is not an exhaustive list, um, but uh, this gives you four kind of directions that you can go. Okay. Uh, number one, personal introductions. So any PA that you know, uh, whether it's uh, within your family, a friend, a friend of the family, a neighbor, uh, maybe even your own doctor's office or your personal PA, um, any personal connection is going to trump um, any other connection in your ability to get shadowing arranged with this person. Um, one of the surgeons I work for really likes to play golf. Turns out a lot of the people that work at the country club um, are pre-med students. And so um, I don't know if that was on purpose, but man, they're pretty smart because, uh, you know, they're kind of running into uh, physicians all the time and they're saying, hey, can I shadow you? And, well, yeah, sure, absolutely. So I'm always arranging shadowing for someone that, that he's run into uh, who wants to apply to med school. And a couple of them have actually diverted their path and gone to PA school, which um, I'd like to take credit, although I don't think it was me. But um, uh, so a personal connection is definitely going to get you in the door and break down a lot of the barriers that you might be running into. Um, all right, number two is going to be uh, schools. Now, whether that's uh, your university, like your college, um, there's often pre-health clubs that have a running list of people who are willing to take shadow students. Um, and if it's not your college, check a PA program, a PA program close to your, your home. Um, call them up and say, hey, listen, I'm really wanting to go to PA school. Do you have a list of PAs that would be willing to take a shadow student? And oftentimes, even if they don't have a list, they can send an email out to their alumni and say, hey, there's somebody looking um, who would be interested in taking this person. Um, if all of that fails, uh, this isn't really a school, but you can go to your state society um, for PAs uh, and uh, check and see if they have a list of people who are willing to take shadow students. Um, um, to get a list of that, you can head over to aapa.org, which is the American Academy of Physician Assistants, and uh, they can certainly, there's a, if you search for um, state societies, there's a list of them there um, that gives you emails and, and phone numbers to call and get you started. 
Um, all right, number three is going to be hospitals. So if you call the hospital in your town and say, I am a college student who is looking to shadow um, a PA, a lot of times they have a list of PAs within the hospital that have agreed to take shadow students or maybe have participated in a um, discovery day or something before and are willing to take shadow students. So that's a, a great opportunity. So call the hospital and ask for like medical staff services or some department like that and, uh, and explain what you're doing and see if they can hook you up uh, with someone. Uh, number four is cold calling. Now, cold calling doesn't necessarily mean calling, but cold phone calls, emails, um, posting to message boards. You have no connection, but you're just calling people up and, and asking. You could Google um, cardiologist near me uh, and see what comes up and just call them and say, hey, I'm looking to shadow a cardiology PA or, uh, or physician even. Um, you know, do you have someone there that would be willing to do that? And a lot of times uh, the people that are answering the phones can kind of guide you in the right direction. Um, you can uh, send emails if you have email access to um, certain people. I'm not sure how, but maybe someone gives you. I've had that happen where someone shadowed me and they hand my email address or my business card over to somebody else. And uh, I get an email out of the blue that just says, hey, can I shadow you? And I say, yeah, sure. Um, also message boards. Uh, I came across this message board not uh, too long ago and it is awesome. Um, I'm not sure who runs it. I need to find out because it's really, really good. Uh, but it's called the physician, uh, I guess it's just physicianassistantforum.com, uh, the PA forum. Uh, so it's www.physicianassistantforum.com. And it is an excellent message board for um, all things related to PAs. So if you haven't been there before, please go there. Um, I don't get paid for this. I don't get anything in, re, you know, any sort of reimbursement for sending people that way. It's just an excellent, excellent thing. I'm scrolling through it right now. Um, within the forums, physician assistant student forums, there is a, an entire category dedicated to shadowing opportunities. And there's 1,770 posts um, in this area. So, um, you know, that's a great place to post and say, hey, I'm in Washington, D.C. Who knows of shadowing opportunities within uh, that area? So um, definitely head over there and just spend some time looking through the articles in general, not even related to shadowing. But um, man, I was really blown away by that uh, by that site. So whoever's doing that, way to go. Keep it up. So there's your four ways to search for shadowing. Um, I know they might seem like no-brainers, but I would definitely not hesitate to wager those personal introductions or personal connections, um, whether it's uh, even you know emailing out to your family or putting it on Facebook. Hey, does anybody know a PA that would let me shadow? Um, that's going to be your best bet for sure. All right, guys, let's move on here. Preparation for shadowing. So let's say you've got shadowing arranged or you at least have a contact person uh, that you're going to arrange shadowing. Okay, now these are these uh, three are very, very important um, uh, points to make in, in, as you prepare. So number one, keep your communication brief and to the point. So I want to support why I'm emailing somebody with a lot of details, but you know what? It gets really difficult to read through all that. So Something like, I am a pre-PA student looking for shadowing opportunities. Could I shadow you for a day or a half a day in the near future? Period. I mean, that gets the point across. You could even say, I'm a student at University of Miami or wherever you are and explain what you're doing. Um, but keep it brief. Keep it just a couple sentences and go from there. Now, this leads to number two, which is make yourself available. You need to adjust your schedule to accommodate the shadowing, not the other way around. I had one shadow student years ago now, who said, I would love to shadow you. Um, just tell me when you've got time. And I said, you know, honestly, any day in the next two weeks would be great. And she says, okay, what about Tuesday after 3.30? Because that's the only time I'm out of class. And I said, well, we don't really have, I mean, we might have cases going on, but nothing's for sure. And if I'm in surgery, I can't come and get you. And that is just complicated. If you would just come at 7.30, that'd be great. She said, well, the only other time I could come would be 7.30 on Sunday morning. And I thought, well, I'm hopefully not working 7.30 on Sunday morning. But I mean, I'm on call, but you know, we try not to operate on the weekends if we don't have to. It was a bit off-putting because I thought, you know, I want to help her out, but I can't accommodate her schedule to the degree that she needs me to. So just remember that, that your your schedule needs to be adjusted to accommodate, you know, shadowing opportunities. Most days are going to start off 
you know, at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So just know if you're going to arrange shadowing, you might have to talk to your professors. Um, you might have to change social activities, etc., to take second place or, or to be excused so that you can go through with the shadowing experience. Um, you know, it is possible to do it on the, the evenings and weekends, but it's just a little bit harder. You know, shift work like ER is a little bit easier to arrange, you know, in the later afternoon or evening. Um, weekends, you know, there's definitely positions where weekends are, are you know, possible. Um, if you're in pediatrics or something, there's oftentimes office hours on the weekends. That's all good, but uh, just keep an open mind. And if somebody says, hey, I can do it, you know, Tuesday through Thursday, anytime in the next month, um, you know, look at your schedule and see what you can do to make that happen. Finally, in anticipation for shadowing, you might need your immunization record. Excuse me, I can't speak. Um, mostly for hospital-based shadowing, they will require a record of your current immunizations. Um, it's not quite so much important, I don't think, for clinic settings, uh, but it's definitely needed for the hospital. So good to have on hand because you never know what shadowing opportunities are going to turn up. And then the final thing, I guess... I, might have said this was two final things, but immunization record, and then uh, you'll most likely have to complete some sort of HIPAA training. Um, and HIPAA training is generally like an online module or something like that that explains what HIPAA is, what information can and can't be shared. Basically, the bottom line is you can tell anyone about any condition that you saw or uh, any medication that was used or any surgical procedure that was performed, you just can't tell anyone who it was on. Even if you recognize them, even if they're a celebrity, they're the pastor at your church, they're your parents' neighbor, um, it does not matter. You cannot share who it was on. Um, but yeah, absolutely, you can talk about, oh, I watched a, a VSD repair and an aortic valve replacement. Um, that was really cool. I can't say... Um, you know, the the principal at my elementary school had an aortic valve replacement because that would be identifiable. Um, basically, don't share who the stuff happened to, but you can definitely share everything else. Um, unless your HIPAA training tells you otherwise, then go with them. But that's pretty much the gist of it. All right. Now let's talk about shadowing itself. So you are at your shadowing experience. What should you do? All right. This is how you shadow like a boss. You arrive on time. You dress professionally. You offer to help if you're familiar with the routine. Uh, if it's the you know second or third time that you've shadowed and you kind of understand what's going on. Let's say someone needs to find uh, Brenda in the clinic. Well, you know who Brenda is. Go find Brenda. Um, you know, jump in. Be willing to help if asked. Um, but just be you know, devoted to watching and absorbing as much information as possible. You'd be surprised at how many times people don't arrive on time and don't dress professionally. You know, don't show up in, in shorts and a t-shirt. Dress business, you know, business casual at least, if not, uh, you know, more than that. Um, you know, I don't, you can definitely check with your um, person that you're shadowing to say, hey, are we wearing scrubs or should I dress, you know, what should I wear? And they might say, you know, guys in a shirt and tie, you know, girls in, in business dress. But don't hesitate to ask. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Um, when you're at your shadowing, you know, it is totally fine to ask questions, but wait for a break in the action uh, to do so. So elevator rides, eating, taking the stairs, walking to a different unit, or even driving to a different hospital. Those are all excellent opportunities to say, hey, I have a quick question about this, or I was wondering about this, or back there you told them this. Tell me more about that. That's all great, but as they're dictating their note in the computer or writing their prescription or something like that, um, that's not the best time to ask. So uh, be strategic in when you ask your questions. Um, most likely, people will be more than happy to answer your questions provided they're at the, the proper times. Um, that also leads me to reading social cues. So um, asking questions at appropriate times, you know, uh, understanding when tense situations are happening might not be the best time to inquire about why something was done. Um, in the operating room, that is a very common thing um, because we can go from kind of laughing around and, and having a good time to super duper focused because something went wrong. You know, a stitch tore out uh, or, you know, something happened with... Um, 
the procedure itself, who knows. But we can go from, from zero to 60 in no time at all. And if you're not paying attention or you're not reading those social cues, you can be asking questions about uh, whatever we were previously just talking about, and it's really distracting. So uh, definitely read those interpersonal social cue type things um, to time your questions or your interactions as much as you can. Um, respect patient privacy. We already covered that with HIPAA. And then honestly, you know what? Don't be offended. Some patients might not want you in the room. Um, don't take it personally. Totally fine. They might say, uh, you know, I'm not comfortable having a student here. Or it might not be quite so eloquent. They might be like, get the bleep out of here. Um, I have had that happen a couple times where um, I'm, I'm familiar with the patient, the patient's familiar with me, but I bring a student in and they say, what is that person doing here? Get them out of here. And who knows? It might be a psychiatric issue. It might be a health issue. It might be an embarrassment issue. A lot of people are dealing with, you know, some heavy stuff in their lives. And so they're stressed out and they're not quite being normal. And, and that's okay. So if you are asked to leave, don't be offended. Totally fine. Just wait quietly in the hallway. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure you'll be filled in on what happened um, as soon as the provider comes out of the room. So um, so that's it. That is honestly how to shadow well, is making sure you're on, you're on time, making sure you're dressed professionally. Um, most of all, being strategic and when you ask your questions. And again, remember, this is not to um, gain medical knowledge. Now, it's fine to be like, oh, you know, what made you pick that drug? Or if you if they were talking about two different treatments or two different procedures, you know, is there a big difference between those? Um, but you know, it's it's not the right time to be like, what, you know, explain to me the difference in the chemotherapy agents. That would be a much more in-depth uh, discussion. So uh, hold off on stuff like that. All right. After shadowing, this is a big one too, because remember, this might be someone that can write you a letter of recommendation. This might be someone that would allow you to do a elective rotation with them. And this might be someone who you might want to get a job from or at least vouch for you for a different job. They might be involved in the hiring process or at least be a reference for you. Um, write them a thank you note. And I don't mean an email. I mean a handwritten thank you note. Uh, the students that have done this, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to figure out where to send it. But man, when I get that card and it's like, hey, thanks for taking so much time. I realize it can be disruptive. So I, I, I genuinely value the, the effort that you put forth for my shadowing opportunity. Wow. Way to go. Like, that's well played. I appreciate that. So um, write a handwritten uh, thank you. Now, we talked about this before, but if you've shadowed more than once and you've established a good rapport, um, that is a perfect person to ask a reference to. But even if it's not time for the reference, ask very close to when you shadow. So let's say you shadow in January and you know that your, your letters of recommendation aren't going to be submitted until May. Um, go ahead and ask him in January. Say, as soon as you're done, say, hey, listen, this summer I'm going to be applying for PA school. I need some letters of recommendation. Are you willing to write one for me? For me? And what that does is that gives them a heads up that you're going to be asking them down the road. But if you don't ask, the, the downside is that you'll go from January to May. Maybe I've had 20 shadow students between you know, January and May. And when you email me, I'll remember your name for sure, but I might not remember as many details. So it's going to be a much more generic letter for you uh, than if you ask me in January and you say, hey, um, you know, even especially if it's over email, because I can see it there, but say, um, hey, you know, would you be interested or would you be willing to write me a, a letter of recommendation? Um, if you ask me right when you're done shadowing, I'm going to be able to make more mental notes on you know, what your strengths were and, and why you stood out and stuff like that to include in the letter and it just makes a much more personal document. Um, all right, last thing here. Uh, if you want to move beyond shadowing, so shadowing is great, but let's say, um, you know, you want to get patient contact hours. Um, a great uh, part-time job is to work as a scribe. And these are, are medical scribes are used pretty much throughout the country. Um, they basically are responsible for um, documenting what is happening during a visit, whether it's a, a clinic visit 
or it's an encounter in the emergency department or something like that, they're allowing the doctor or the PA or the NP to provide the medical care and have the conversations that they need to have without worrying about the electronic health record or documenting things in the chart. So what the scribe does is the scribe is in the room with them and is recording everything that's happening, um, whether it's what the patient says or what the physical exam findings are. Um, it is a great introduction to healthcare because you get into the rooms, in with the patients, you learn medical terminology, you learn how a visit flows. It's just really, really great experience. Um, I don't have a whole lot more information personally from Scribes, but there is a great website called Scribe America. Um, it is at uh, www.scribeamerica.com. Um, and that is a, a website that um, can actually get you started as a scribe. Um, you can also Google, you know, places, you know, how to become a scribe or, or what uh, medical scribing entails or opportunities for employment. Um, so that's, you know, great for experience, great for contact hours. Um, and scribes are kind of an introductory way to be involved. So if you're in, in high school, um, you can be a scribe. Um, it's a great part-time job, especially over summers and things like that. But if you are ready to get more patient contact hours, um, and we're going to have some future episodes devoted to this and, and other opportunities, but um, consider getting like a, a, a certified nursing assistant uh, certificate, which comes from usually like a uh, long-term care facility or uh, nursing school off, sometimes will offer these. Um, your medical assistant or even uh, going up to something like a EMT, an emergency medical technician, um, or a, a respiratory therapist. Um, those tend to be longer programs, you know, six months or 12 months or 18 months. Um, but they also give you a great opportunity for patient care, um, allows you to make some money while you're getting your patient contact hours, um, but uh, that can help segue into your career as a PA. Uh, again, we'll have some more episodes uh, on that in the future. Um, all right, that's what I got, man. That's how you shadow like a boss is uh, the proper preparation, understanding what shadowing is for, the benefits of shadowing, what shadowing is not for, how to arrange it, uh, what to do before you get there, what to do at your shadowing, what to do after your shadowing. Um, I think we covered it. So if you've got more information that you would like to know, do not hesitate to email me. I think it just seems odd. People are like, oh, I don't want to bug him. Please send me an email. I'll be more than happy to respond. Chris at pastartup.co. Um, I'd love to answer more questions about this. Um, I will put the links to uh, the websites that I mentioned, um, the Physician Assistant Forum, Scribe America, AAPA, um, all those in the show notes today as well, along with those timestamps. Um, if you have questions about the PA profession and would be so kind, please email me uh, at questions at pastartup.co for our uh, next question and answer podcast. Um, and then, of course, I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the podcast, leave me a rating and review. If you leave me a rating and review and I read it on uh, the podcast, I will be glad to send you a PA Startup podcast sticker for your laptop or any other surface that needs a killer sticker on it um yeah that's what i got guys so hope things are going great uh finish strong if you are in college right now and you're a pre-pa you will not go wrong by considering pa school um good luck with your um caspa uh, application uh, we're going to have some episodes on that coming up um if you are in pa school shadowing is a great way to stay motivated so don't hesitate i know everyone wants to use their day off for rest and relaxation but uh, don't be afraid to jump into the trenches and remember what you're doing because uh it's pretty sweet once you get out here um hang in there guys keep plugging away and we will see you on the next episode of the pa startup podcast thank you so much Oh my goodness, I am getting called in right now. I normally say I'll be right back, but this might not be brief. But anyways, I'll be right back.